Hello and welcome back to World 360. Why has a raid on a West Bank hospital sent shock waves across the world? Maldives President Mohammad Muzo may face impeachment, but what's the confusion over constitutional procedures? And finally, what is the downfall of China's ever grand group? Tell us about the country's real estate market. We answer these and more in today's episode. So first up, the West Bank, which is one of the two major Palestinian territories. It's located near the Jordan River, and as you can see from this map, it's far from the action in Gaza where Hamas and Israel are at war. But there have been multiple attacks in the West Bank since the start of the Gaza war. Just on Tuesday, Israeli special forces disguised as doctors killed three militants at a hospital in the occupied West Bank city of Jenin. Now, this took place in Ibn Sina Hospital, one of the largest hospitals in the West Bank. CCTV footage of the Israeli operation captured the entire incident. The operation bore an eerie resemblance to a similar scene depicted in the famous Netflix show Fauda. Now, some of the undercover Israeli forces wore women's clothing and others were dressed as medical staff, pacing through a corridor with rifle. Reports identified the three assassinated militants as Basil Eman Al-Ghazavi, his brother Mohammad Eman Al-Ghazavi, and another Palestinian named Mohammad Walid Jalamne. Hamas released a statement claiming that one of the three men was a member of its group. The Islamic Jihad, which is a Palestinian militant group and an ally of Hamas, said the other two men who were also brothers, were its members. They executed them in cold blood by firing bullets directly into their heads inside the room where they were being treated, Neji Nazal, the hospital's medical doctor, told Reuters. Now, this incident is important as Israel has long been arguing that Hamas is using civilian buildings like schools and hospitals as its command centers. Following this operation, the Israeli military said this showed that militants were using such buildings as shelters and using civilians as human shields. Keep in mind that this is the West Bank which is governed by the Palestinian Authority while Hamas runs the Gaza Strip. Now, Palestinian Health Minister Maya Kaila described the incident as a war crime and urges the United Nations and international rights groups to put an end to such actions. Since Hamas attacked Israel on 7th October, over 25,000 people have been killed in Gaza. Meanwhile, Hamas has captured over 200 Israeli hostages. But there has also been violence outside of Gaza, specifically in the West Bank. Reports say over 300 people have been killed by Israeli forces in the West Bank. But the recent hospital raid has put the spotlight on the West Bank and has spurred fears of greater violence and unrest among Palestinians in both major Palestinian territories. The Jerusalem Post also issued an editorial recently titled West Bank could be New Gaza with terrorists using civilian infrastructure. This editorial was posted after the attack in the hospital and it warned that this indicates the beginnings of the kind of terrorist state that Hamas built in Gaza. For our second topic, we're going to declutter all the confusion surrounding efforts to impeach Maldives President Mohammad Muzu. Last Sunday, we saw dramatic visuals from the Maldivian parliament known as a Majlis, where parliamentarians were engaged in a ruckus. This occurred after the opposition declined approval of four members to Muzu's cabinet. Following this, the main opposition alliance, the MDP and its allied party, the Democrats, which is run by former President Mohammad Nasheed, said it plans to submit a motion to impeach President Muzu. The MDP and the Democrats also said they have gathered enough signatures for the impeachment. According to the Maldives constitution, a sitting president can be removed by two-thirds majority vote in the parliament. But last month, the Majlis passed an amendment on these impeachment rules, which states that the total number of members of parliament should be calculated on the basis of active members instead of seats. Now, this is important because unlike in India, a Maldivian cabinet minister does not retain their seat in parliament. Therefore, the seven members of parliament who joined the president's cabinet last year gave up their seats. This means the vacated seats are not counted during the determination of the total number of members of parliament, according to this amendment, which makes the total strength of the Majlis 80 instead of the original 87. This then makes it quite easy for the opposition, which holds a majority in the Majlis, to impeach the president. 54 votes are needed for impeachment instead of the previous 58. Together, the MDP and the Democrats have a total of 55 members in parliament. Now, the Musu government is attempting to stop impeachment efforts by challenging the very amendment passed last year in court. 
On Tuesday, the Attorney General's office registered a case with the Maldives Supreme Court over the recent amendment. It's very interesting to see because although Musu won the presidential election last year, his party does not have a majority in the parliament. And therefore, this makes the domestic politics in Maldives all that more fraught. Recently, the Prosecutor General in Maldives was attacked and former President Ibrahim Soli called it a politically motivated attack. This situation is sure to develop, especially since the Maldivian parliamentary elections are around the corner and scheduled to take place on 17th March. Now questions are emerging whether these elections will be delayed after the recent developments. But do stay tuned to the print as we bring you the latest updates on this. For our last topic, we're looking at China's real estate market. Earlier this week, a Hong Kong court ordered a major Chinese property developer known as the Evergrande Group with nearly 300 billion USD in debt to be liquidated. This comes two years after the Evergrande Group defaulted on its international bond repayments, which triggered a crisis in the Chinese real estate sector at a time when the Chinese economy is experiencing a slowdown. You might be wondering why a Hong Kong court issued this order. This is because even though 90% of Evergrande's assets are located in China, the company is listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Now, five to six years ago, Evergrande was listed as the world's most valuable real estate company. But just three years later, its downfall began. But Evergrande's story, analysts say, is a symptom of larger issues in China's real estate market and other sectors of the Chinese economy that are marked by slowing growth, increasing debt, and a shrinking workforce. In fact, earlier this month, China's customs office released data for the month of December, which showed that the country's exports declined for the first time since 2016. This data came a couple of weeks after Chinese President Xi Jinping admitted on New Year's Eve that the Chinese economy is facing headwinds. Keep in mind that this is the world's largest manufacturing hub we're talking about. And any trends in the Chinese economy is sure to have ripples on global supply chains and the rest of the world economy. And the indication from the Evergrande debacle is that Chinese consumers perhaps don't see real estate in their country as a smart investment anymore. As the New York Times report put it, this is a sharp loss of faith in property in China. Not to mention the quarter of July-September 2023 saw China get its first foreign direct investment, that's FDI, deficit, which means there was a reduction in the FDI flows into the country. And this sparked fears of domestic capital flight by Chinese households and private investors. In 2023, China's housing sales fell 6.5% at a time when real estate accounts for roughly one quarter of China's economy, which makes all this all that more significant. Thanks for watching. This is Pia Krishnkuti for The Print.